Good evening, gang, or good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you may be, whatever time you may be watching this. Welcome back to another episode of Sit Down with Simsy. Today's episode, I have been saying that I'm going to do some stuff that's unrelated to COD, um, and uh, here we go with the football stuff. That I'm I'm big into my football. I always have been. Um, and it's something that I can sit here and very easily talk about and enjoy talking about um, and and be able to easily sit with you guys and hopefully you guys can get involved. If you don't like football, I apologise. I will still be doing some uh, football related pods. I might do one maybe weekly or um, every, some sometimes when something big happens or something like that. Um, if you're not interested in football, that's fine. There's still going to be loads of pods that aren't related to football, so don't worry. Um, but it's just something that I can talk about and, and enjoy talking about rather than just sitting there and talking about cod um which often can be negative and this this won't be hopefully it'll be something that you guys enjoy um but today i'm going to go through my 1 to 20 prediction of based on three days before the premier league starting the current signings that people have made where i think uh each football team is going to finish in this year's premier league uh at, at a guess obviously um and i'm gonna go through my one to 20 so i hope you enjoy it please let me know your comments below um who you support and how wrong you think i am because i undoubtedly will be wrong on quite a few one to 20 would be an insane prediction and if i put my prediction on a bet i'd probably make a shitload of money uh if it was to come in so it's very very difficult i won't be doing that but you never know you never know i might get one to 20 right let me know your predictions as well and who you support down below but i'm gonna get into it i'm gonna change my screen because i've got them all written down here and we can go through it together so first things first i'm gonna go through an alphabetical order so first things first we've got arsenal now that's an interesting place to start do i start down the nah do we start there or do we start here i'm gonna start I'm going to start in relegation. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go this way. I'm not going to do it alphabetically like that and just slot them in. I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. 20th position. Now, I apologise in advance, but in my opinion, it has to be between Luton or Sheffield United. They're the two that stand out to me, first and foremost. <clears throat> two of the three promoted teams, and from what I've seen in the transfer market... Clearly, they're less backed in terms of finance than a lot of the other teams, but they did get a big amount come through um, from getting promoted. I just don't see Luton... I'm sorry, I'm going to put Luton in. I, I just don't see a world where Luton don't finish bottom other than Sheffield United, and I think that they will be the two at the bottom. I'm going to go with Luton right at the bottom. Or oh, is it Sheffield United? I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to stick with Luton. I, I genuinely haven't seen any of Luton's signings, to be completely honest, other than, and that's kind of sums it up for me. I, I'm often on Sky Sports News and see all the news and people who are uh, getting linked to who, and I haven't seen anything other than they've just signed Ross Barkley. And to be honest, that's a good signing for them, but he hasn't really done anything in the past few years. He's got a lot to prove. Is Ross Barkley going to transform Luton Town? No. Sorry. Sheffield United, similar boat. Financial difficulties is going to hinder them, um, I think. I just don't see them being anywhere but the bottom three. It might be that a different team kind of... I mean, there's always quite a few teams in the bottom three that kind of dance around it for ages. The relegation battle is often more interesting than the title race um, for most years. It generally is. So it, there'll be quite a few teams that are in or around it. I just don't see a world where it's not one of those two teams. And I think they, I might get this order wrong at the end, but I think it will be these two. So I'm going to go with that first. Now, a lot of people will predict me to just put Burnley here, but I don't think Burnley get relegated. I just don't see it. I think Burnley were phenomenal last season. I think, I'm not sure if they beat the record for the most points in the championship, but they were close to it. I think they beat the most goals. Like Vincent Company managing them has done an extremely good job um, since they got relegated in the previous season. And I just don't see them going back down again under his management. I think he's done such a good job. Um, yeah, I just don't see it. The guy's a winner. And he's, he's, he's kind of brought that through. Um, and I just don't see them being the next one. Now, the third spot here is a tough one because there's a few that could definitely be in it. Um you got Forrest, but towards the back end of the season, I actually think Forrest were really good. I love Gibbs White. Um, Brennan Johnson's really good. And Awanyi, the striker, is an absolute tank. I rate that guy. 
Um, I don't see them going down. I think for me, and this is going to be a lot of recency bias, but if you hear me out on it, I think Wolves could be in here. The reason why I think Wolves could be in here is not only has Lopetegu just left them three days before, the reasons why he's left them are because he was promised to get backed um, after he took on the management role. I mean, he was Spain manager. I think he was... Was it, was it either Barca or Madrid? I think it was Barca. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but from my memory, I think it was Barca and he was Spain uh, manager. So it was a, he was a big coup for them, for Wolves, to get somebody of his calibre as a manager. It was pretty impressive in the first place. And then they sold all their best players and didn't really... I don't think really they've got anyone of any decent level. I think the only signing they've made from memory is Matt Doherty who is a second choice right back and he's ass like i'm sorry i don't think he watches me but he's not that great <laughs> he doesn't watch me if he ever sees this i'm sorry but i mean you're not the best of signings let's be fair uh i just don't see anything going through that club that's going to save them they've got rid of ruben nevers who is unbelievable um they've lost Jao martino as well so they've lost two two of them i mean they are literally portugal fc really aren't they but they've lost two of them um they never really replaced jota uh, who else has gone? Uh, Adama Traore is gone, so they've lost that kind of. Yeah, he didn't really do loads, but he was a great option off the bench. Um, it kind of surprised me that he was always off the bench, to be honest. But he, he they've lost that. Um, they've lost. Oh, it was centre back. I think they lost to either Brentford or Brighton or somebody like that. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But they've lost. They've lost a lot of key players. They've got lost like. I think it's like 70 mil worth of players or something. And they've just not signed anyone. So they're a worry for me. They're the ones that I'm kind of thinking could be there. Other ones that could be down there. Let's be real. Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth. And this is where it kind of could go either way. So Bournemouth, in my opinion, made the worst managerial decision I've ever seen in football. There's been some bad ones. But... Gary O'Neill did one of the single best... I think he was potentially... It's it's impossible to say that Pep Guardiola shouldn't have got manager of the year because he won the treble. But I think Gary... It was easier for him to have won the treble with that team than Gary O'Neill doing what he did for Bournemouth. And the interesting thing is, is that Bournemouth then sacked him to sign... Uh, to, I can't even remember the name of their manager. But they signed him with no Prem experience. And now he is supposedly, I think he has been confirmed. I think I'm pretty sure he's been confirmed that Gary O'Neill is now the Wolves manager. So it could be either of those two. I'm trying to think of anybody else that could be in in there. The other thing that worries me is I don't think they'll necessarily, I don't think they'll get relegated. I think they'll be okay because they, they haven't sold Palinia. It's Fulham. But I think if he went, that could have been difficult for them because Mitrovic doesn't want to play for them anymore. Um... So that's one thing. But I think Fulham will be okay. So I'm going to leave them out of this. Bournemouth, Wolves. Interesting to see what happens at Everton. Everton's squad is a lot better than getting relegated. But their club is run so badly. So badly at the top. Um, I think Sean Dyche will do a good enough job. I hope he doesn't get fired because he's, he deserves to. Palace potentially. But they normally end up being okay. And Hodgson did a really good job for them. Um... I think for yeah, as I said, I think Forest would be okay. I don't see West Ham doing badly. They look like they're going to get a number of good signings. Um, so I'm going to leave them out of the equation too. Do Brentford finally have a bad season now they've lost Ivan Tony for six months from the gambling stuff? I still think they managed too well. Don't think they'll be down there. So for me, it's between Wolves, Wolves and Bournemouth. Potentially Burnley, but I think Burnley will be okay. I think Burnley will be in one of the slightly higher ones here. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Bournemouth. I'm going to go with Bournemouth. Everybody put this last time, but Gary O'Neill saved them. And I think Gary O'Neill gets Wolves here. And I'm going to put Burnley... Burnley or... F Forest or Fulham or Everton. I feel like Everton over a full course of a season have just got to be better than they were last season. It's hard to not put Burnley there because they've got no... I can't say no experience. They were in there for years. But they haven't... Got, like It's a completely different team, really, to what it was before. Burnley. Fulham. I think Fulham will be okay off Forest. 
Hmm. Forest needed time to gel, so I think Forest might be a little bit higher up. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Burnley here. I am gonna go Burnley here. Burnley, and I think that would be a good season for them. They would take that off the rip, a hundred percent. Burnley fans, would you take that off the rip? I just see, like I said, I feel like Fulham are gonna have some issues, especially if they don't have Mitrovic. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Fulham here. I think they'll be one of the ones that digress a lot. I think there's also talk, I believe that there's talk of William potentially going as well. And he was really good for them last season, but I can see them being there. The only reason why they're not is, I mean, Leno did a really good job for them in goal last season. He's a good goalkeeper. I do really like Palinia. Um, it's what happens with Mitrovic is quite, quite telling us. He really does want to leave by the sound of it as well. So that's a tough one to call this position here. I'm going to go Forest here though. I think Forrest... Oh, Forrest and Fulham. Went back in... Nah, I can't do that. I can't do that. Fulham played so well. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go Forrest here. I'm going to go Forrest here. I think that is a tough one. But I'm going to go Forrest here. And I'm going to go... Uh, oh, fuck. Who was I talking about? <laughs> I've completely lost who I was talking Okay, yeah, it was Fulham. Okay, so... Not in Forrest there. I'm going to go Fulham here. Damn, that's tight. It's going to be tight down at this end. This is when it starts. These are the ones that are kind of dogging it out. I think Fulham will kind of be all right. But I think these are the ones that are going to be really grinding the extra points at the end of the season. I think it's going to be the, these guys down the bottom. And these were where it starts to be more more clear and more okay. I would say I'm going to go oh, Palace or Everton here. Or Brentford. I don't see Brentford doing as well. Do Brentford come into this one? No, they're just so well. Not that Marco Silva hasn't done a good job. I just think there's less fallout at Brentford. So I'm going to go Brentford above Fulham. I'm going to go Brentford. Yeah, but Zaha's gone from... Nah. nah but Tony does so much for that team. I'm going to have to. I, I, just, I just think without Tony for six months... They're getting back at the back end of the season, get them some, some points. But I think it's hard, isn't it? Palace could be here, no Zaha. I can't, no, I can't. I can't put Brentford there for the been so good. Hodgson did such a good job back end of the season. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of confusion on this bit. I'm like acting as if this is like life or death, as if I get this wrong. But this is hard. This area is hard because you could have Everton here, you could have Brentford here, you could have uh, Palace here. <sighs> That's hard. West Ham. I think West Ham end up a bit higher this season though. I'm going to go uh, Palace or Brentford for me. Or Everton. No, I'm going Everton. I'm going Everton here. I'm going Everton here. I just think Dominic Calvert-Lewin is for me a bit overrated often injured often not there when they need him um, and Neil Mope is not is he even there anymore Neil Mope I don't, you don't even see him not not doing it for them be interesting to see uh, Deli Ali if he can break into the team again if start getting some form um Interesting. If you haven't seen the Gary o uh, Gary O'Neill, sorry, if you haven't seen the Gary Neville uh, interview of Deli Ali at the end of the season, watch that because that it's very telling. Definitely worth a watch. I'm gonna go Everton here though. I'm gonna go Palace here. I think Palace with Eze um, was performing well at the back end of the season. Um, I think he'll come into his own. I think there's a lot of players that might shine in Zaha's ab absence, but it will be interesting to see how they do. But Roy Hodgson gets the best out of Palace. He always has done. I think they'll I think they'll be okay. And I just, again, Everton's club is run poorly. Even though Sean Dyche is a very good manager, Everton's club is run poorly and they'll finish worse than they should. They should really be up here somewhere, but they, they, they're, not, they're not. They're not there at the moment. So I'm going to go there. This one's... Brentford, I think. I think Brentford go here. Right about there. And then this is where it starts to get interesting at the top end. Because we've got 
who could come in next? If realistically, you've got Brighton, Villa, Tottenham, Newcastle, Liverpool probably in this sort of battle, I would say, where they're all kind of competing. And Chelsea, sorry, and Chelsea, where you're all kind of competing for the European, can we break into the top four like type stage? So this is where it gets difficult. West Ham, I'm going to go West Ham here. And I think West Ham after last season, don't think that would be the worst case scenario for them. I think they have a much better season. I hope David Moyes can get out of the line because I think David Moyes has been uh, such a good manager for the Premier League. I mean, his Everton team was insane. It's just the thing with West Ham is the fans aren't, as far as I can see, they're not as keen on the way he plays football in terms of it's a little bit slower, a bit more defensive-minded. Um, but it looks like they're going to make some very good signings. People will laugh at the Harry Maguire signing. I don't think that's a bad signing for them. I think the way, as much as he is a meme of a football player, you got to think, when he was at Leicester, he was class. And the way that Leicester played favoured the way he plays, which is why he does quite well for England. It's Because when you think about United, United play quite a high-press team, which can leave him quite isolated at the back at times because he's not exactly a pacey defender. He's in a 1v1 situation, you're not gonna, you choose other centre-backs over him because he's not got the pace. But in a more solidified sort of David Moyes type team, I can see him doing really well there. They've had James Ward-Prowse um, from Southampton agreed in principle as well. And West Ham, I think, I'm pretty sure West Ham had the most... Was it West Ham? I think it was West Ham who had the most set-piece goals and they've always been good at set-pieces and David Moyes loves set-pieces. Remember Maro and Fellaini under David Moyes? They fucking... He, this guy, loves set-pieces. James Ward-Prowse is perfect for West Ham. I also think that if Paqueta goes... Paqueta is a, definitely... Uh, would be a miss for West Ham. He's definitely very talented. But he didn't exactly score that. I know this isn't everything because the way he plays football is, is better than James Ward-Prowse and I'm a Saints fan. Um, but his stats weren't exactly that great in a particularly average West Ham team and I think James Ward-Prowse will get a lot more assists and a lot more goals than him so I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing ever if he does go um, it'd be better for them if they kept him obviously and they've got that Alvarez from Ajax it's a good signing as well um more like the Skamaka, uh, Skamaka just never really did anything for West Ham, and then you're just left with uh, Danny Ings, who's always injured. He was, I mean, he has been towards the end of the season. He seemed like when he was coming back, I don't know if it's because of, because of his injuries, he lost some confidence. When he was at Saints, he was banging in goals all the time. Class, class finisher, he still is, but I do wonder if he's on his last legs. I don't see. Him or I mean Antonio with James Ward Prowse putting set pieces and would be a better option for me than Danny Ings, but I think they need a striker. I don't know if they've got anybody in like their academy or anything, but I think West Ham need to get another striker before the season uh, starts, and I think that's going to be hard. So they might then be in a situation where any of these four. I'm pointing at my screen, you can't see that. Tenth to fourth, tenth to thirteenth. I think they could be even fourteenth. Could be really in any particular order. I don't think Fulham will have anywhere near as good a season as they had last season, but yeah, I just I don't know. Well, Fulham, I just think the whole Mitrovic thing could really cost Fulham personally, so that's why I put them in fourteenth. Um, next, who have we got? We've got Brighton, who've lost a lot of talent, but they do recruit very well. Doesn't look like... I don't think they lose Caicedo either. I don't think he ends up going to Chelsea, but we'll see on that one. L Liverpool, Spurs. Spurs is hard. They're under a completely new manager. At the moment, they've still got Harry Kane. And Harry Kane will get them 20 plus, 25 plus goals. Son needs to have a good season because he was awful under Conte. I don't think he liked playing under Conte. Um... Yeah, I don't think Spurs finish ninth. I don't really, really don't. So, it's for me, it's then, do Newcastle keep their season going? I think so. They made some good signings. Ninth is still nowhere near good enough for Chelsea, and that'll be a poor season. 
um, for them. So it's either Tottenham, who I've just said I don't think will, Liverpool, Brighton, Villa. Villa's interesting as well. I think Villa are going to be very good this season. They were good last season. Unai Emery, I think, picked up either the second or third most points since he signed. Um, they were incredible. But they are going to be in Europe. And Emery is very good in Europe. And I think they'll go a long way. And that could hit back them, um, their league position, even though they've got a really good team. Tillemans is class. That's a great signing. Paul Torres is a great signing. Um, and uh, Diaby from Leverkusen is a good signing as well. I think they've done really well. I've probably missed a few signs. I don't know all of them. Um, they've done good business, and Emery is class. So I think it'd be hard for me to put them in ninth based on that. But I do also think, as I said, that they are going to be in a European campaign, and that will be a struggle for them. Um, did Prime make European, Europe last season? I think they did, didn't they? I think they did. I think that could be the same situation. Yeah, they must have done. But they must have been in Europe. They have to have been. I think losing McAllister is not great. If Caicedo goes, it could be worse. But I do like Brighton's team. I like the way they play. Is it hard to play? Mate, this is hard. This is harder than it looks. I feel like I'm waffling a lot, but this is hard. Liverpool have got a completely new look midfield. Could take some time to gel. But they've got a lot more youth. And if Con uh, if Klopp can get them going it's quick enough, then they'll be up higher. Mate, this is hard. If Kane goes, Spurs are there. If not lower. But I've got to do this based on Kane staying. And I think, I think he will. United should have signed him. I know that there's this whole thing with Levy, but Levy would have definitely sold him. In my opinion, Levy would have sold Kane to United if United came in for a high enough price. They should have just paid it because they paid £72 million for Hoyland, who scored a few goals at Atalanta in the Italian league. Could have a lot of promise, could have a lot of high ceiling, but, I mean, that's a crazy amount of money for him. But however you look at it, it's a crazy amount of money for him. Um it would have been a safer bet to pay more money for Kane. You'd make that in shirt signings easily just by Kane. That's what they should have done. Um, and they didn't. So I think that's a fail from them. But I don't see them finishing here either. God, this is so hard. Chelsea have just got to do better. They have to. So I don't think they're going to be there. This is going to piss some people off. But I'm going to do Brighton here. I'm going to do Brighton here. I think they'll miss McAllister. And Trossard obviously left them last season. Matoma looked really good though. If they can keep hold of Caicedo, they'll be doing well. They always make good signings anyway. But I think with Europe as well, I think that would be top, top 10 would be good for them. I'm going to then do Villa here because of the European thing. But I think they would probably take that. Villa there? Yeah. Spurs or Liverpool. This is hard. You could basically got Salah v Kane, sort of. Not really. Oh, no, I've got to do something else. I have to. I don't like Spurs as centre-backs. I just don't. Eric Dyer's not that good. I don't even like Clement Long Longley if they sign him from Barca. I just, oh, there's something about Spurs' this defence just doesn't do it for me. I'm going to go with Spurs here. I'm going to go, oh, God, that's so hard. So I, I think Villa could be up here. And Spurs could be here. But Kane just gets them so many goals. Nah, I'm going, I'm going to have to go here. I think that I think for those two, it's European football might be a bit much with their squad size on top of the Prem. So I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to go Liverpool. Because they've had a lot of change, I think it will take them some time to settle that midfield in. Although I think they're all good players. Um, they've lost a lot of leadership in players like Henderson going, Milner's out the squad, um... 
Uh, Fabinho looks like he's going. I don't think he's gone yet, but he is going by the seams of things. Like They have got a lot of younger legs in, but I just think it will take them some time to bed that all in. Um, this is where it gets really hard. Liverpool, I'm going to put... Che oh, fuck. Chelsea surely can't... I think it's a bad season still for Chelsea if they come fifth. I do. But then we've got Newcastle. I just think United... Def I feel like United make top four. Is Newcastle going to make it? Tonali is such a good signing for them because it can un they can then unleash Gamares. Callum Wilson, if he can stay fit, does get goals. And I love Isak. I love Isak. I think he's class. Defensively, they're good. Can they do it again? You've either got Newcastle... For me here, you've got Newcastle, Chelsea or Liverpool. And it's really hard to call. Because one of the three will make the top four. And then it will be United, City and Arsenal that are in no particular order in this bit here for me. I think that's the top three. I'll go through the order of that in a minute. But I think that's my top three is United, Arsenal and City. I think it's hard to argue. Unless Chelsea can pull something off. But... I don't think it would be Liverpool or Newcastle that break into the top three. Spurs, definitely not. Liverpool and Newcastle, I don't think are top three. But this bit could go anywhere. Newcastle, Chelsea or Liverpool to be the fourth team. Still not... Like, I like Cody Gakpo a lot, but I still think he leaves something to be desired. What are they going to do with Trent? Are they going to put him back at right back or use somebody else at right back and put him CDM? It's all difficult. I just think... Oh, it's so hard. I feel like Liverpool are a better team than Chelsea as a squad. They're a better team. But Chelsea have got a more talented team. But they've got too many players still. They've signed a load and they have sold shit loads. But they've lost a lot of... They still signed a lot of players when they had too many already. I still think they need to cut down their squad more. That could hinder them and maybe Chelsea here. No, Chelsea here. I still don't think that's good enough for Chelsea's team. But I still think they've got too much to do. And Kunku's already injured. Mudrik needs to do so much more and he will get played. I love Poch though. And that Nicholas Jackson looks quite... He could be, he could be good. But then I just think... The Nicholas Jackson guy does look really good from what I've seen in preseason. I haven't really seen much of him before, but Bournemouth were going to sign him before. And it's like, Chelsea, Bournemouth, like, I, I, no, no, I can't do that to Liverpool. But I do think Liverpool, I'm going to, oh, Liverpool, Newcastle, I'm going to, I'm doing this. Liverpool. I just think that based on last season, I feel like Tonali is a really good signing for Newcastle. If Livermento can stay fit, new Livermento signing will go under the radar if he can stay fit and his injury hasn't hindered him too much. He had a huge injury, but he was easily, in my opinion, I think he was Southampton's most talented player prior to his injury. He was class. Um, I think it's that. Then I think it's United. Because they signed Hoyland, not Kane. I'm going to go... Oh, but they closed. I'm United. Do you know what? I think the United Arsenal is going to be closer than people think. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I just don't see how they don't win the league. I'll come to them in a minute. But this one still actually... If I put them there for now... This is going to piss some people off, but United fans will agree. Is that I think this will be closer than you think. Onana is a big presence and David De Gea was a bit as long as he was obviously class for them over the years one uh, player of the year for them a few times he had so many mistakes in him that I don't think he was enough of a leader for that team and Onana is very vocal he already roasted Harry Maguire like in pre-season he doesn't care he will make a few mistakes from what we've seen but I think he's a much more rounded player now than De Gea. Um, so that's that's one. I think the Mason Mount signing will be big, bigger than people think. I think Mason Mount is class and just needed to play more football. 
don't really see why he wasn't getting as much credit at Chelsea as he deserved. Um, the Hoy- Hoyland will get goals, but I don't think he'll be that big of a deal. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Greenwood, um, whether or not he plays. I think it would look bad for them if they do, to be honest, but we'll see. It's a hard one. Um, Rashford just signed a new contract for them. He needs to perform at the same height that he was during most of the season. But keep that going and give more and just go at people. That's that's a good signing. I just... I think the gap will be closed down. But I, yeah, I'm going to stick... I'm going to stick with this. The reason why I'm going to stick with Arsenal second and City first is although Arsenal have gone and got Rice, which is a great signing for them, um, and they've gone and got Havertz and Timber, they're good signings. They are very good signings, but for me, I mean, it looks as if Havertz is probably either going to play Cam or Striker, and Jesus isn't going to win you the league. He is really good, really good and really talented, but he's not like a typical number nine. I think they still lack that, and I don't see Havertz doing that. He didn't do it at Chelsea. He's not like a 25 goal. None of them are 25 goal plus. Odegaard is class. Arsenal have clearly got so much talent. I think they've made better signings to push on towards City. And City have lost a lot of talent. But they've still made some good signings. But here's my thing with why this is... Again, it's hard for that to be closer because City won at the last... It was just a weird season, wasn't it, last season? I'm waffling so much, but this is all so difficult. City are worse now in my opinion I think City are a worse team now than what they were last season and I think losing Mares is massively massively underrated of how bad a loss that is because I don't think they've really well I mean they haven't replaced that um Gundogan for me is that is an awful awful thing for them for them to have let him go it's not not that it was their choice by the sounds of it but that is not being replaced by Kovacic. It's just not. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not the replacement for Kovacic is coming in Paqueta. But, uh, sorry, for uh, Gundogan is coming in uh, Paqueta. But still, he's not Gundogan. I don't think they replace Gundogan that well. Unless Pep Guardiola has given Phil Foden the keys to Gundogan. Do you know what I mean? Like, unless, unless we're finally going to see uh, Foden come into his like into his own fully and get given the full reins of Man City um, and now it's his time to shine. Maybe that's Pep's thinking, but I do think they're missing a winner. It looks like they've, uh, not a winner, a winger with Mahrez going. They obviously had Sterling go to Chelsea last season. Mahrez had gone. They're big losses. Carl Walker looks as if he's going to stay. I don't see why they would let him go. Guardiola coming in is, he's a phenomenal centre-back and he will be, very good. I just I don't think that affects that much with him coming in. Um, I think Ake will probably play on the left or Akanji and they'll battle it out. There's so many games that this squad plays at top level that they will all play. And I think John Stones will... Oh, I mean, John Stones for me was... Uh, oh, you've got John Stones, Gundogan and Haaland and De Bruyne were the four best players at City last season. And they could... You could each argue their points. Clearly, Haaland will get all the plaudits because of his freakish goal record. But the other players put them in those positions. De Bruyne is the best midfielder on the planet. Haaland is probably the greatest number nine right now um, in terms of out-and-out strikers. But Stones, my God, Stones is insane. So it's hard with what you do with all those defenders... Has Laporte gone? I don't think he's gone. Akanji was brought in as more to be a squad player, but he was actually playing a lot more games than I thought. And Ake was class last season, so it'd be hard on any of those to kind of not get as much game time in the Prem. But I think a lot of them will will have reduced playing time because there's no way they're buying Guardiola in for him not to be playing. So I think it's more going to be players like Akanji and Laporte, if he hasn't already gone, I don't think he has, um, that will play less. Um, but I just don't think 
as good a player as Kovacic is and he will suit their style of play. Stats wise, City need the numbers. Good bit of business for them again to have seemingly kept hold of Bernardo Silva. That's a good uh good retention, I guess, from them. But yeah, I just the gap has all been completely closed in terms of the rest, I would say. Because City have got worse, but I just don't see them not winning. I don't think Arsenal have yet got it in them that they're winners, as good as their players are and as talented as their players are. With especially with Odegaard is unbelievable last season. He's sort of a mini De Bruyne, left mini left footed De Bruyne. Um, I love Saka. I do like Martinelli. Um, I just think they're still missing an actual striker as good as Jesus is. He's more, he, you know, he's more like a dribbly type of striker. He's a, he's a I'll run at you type of striker, rather than a an actual number nine, which I still think that team kind of misses. And I think the big thing for me with Arsenal, which is where it could dip with United to Arsenal changing, besides the striker situation, is I just don't get this David Raya thing. I don't get it. They're both. I just think the amount of points that Aaron Ramsdale saved them last season. Yes, he made a couple of mistakes, but I mean, he made them have a lot more points than what they would have had if other keepers were in there. And I just think that they're as good as Raya is, it could completely upset the dynamic of a goalkeeper. It just seems weird to have two number ones. Nobody else does that. Maybe it'll be like they'll both be insane, but neither one of them is going to like being on the bench. So when one of them is forced on the bench, does that cause some tension in the dressing room? Uh... Ramsdale is a really big personality, is very up vocal, so I can see him being annoyed or the dynamic being messed up a little bit in the dressing room if he's not starting. Um, so that's where this one could change, but I do think Arsenal's team is better than United's, I think, still. I would go here, but that one could be closer than you think. I think it'll be a lot closer than last season, but I'm going with that. That's my 1-20. to 20. City first still for me. Arsenal, United, Newcastle, top four. Liverpool, Chelsea and Spurs, European. Villa and Brighton to go down a bit lower. And West Ham to come in in 10th because I think they're actually going to make some good signings. Um, and they had such a poor season last season. Luton, Sheffield United and Bournemouth to go down but it could potentially be Wolves. Company to keep Burnley up. Uh, Forest to keep in the Prem. Fulham to have a much worse season than last season. Uh, Everton to just be middle of the road with Palace, Brentford and West Ham. And then uh, these are still good seasons for these teams. A Villa could be here instead of Spurs or even even in these places. I think Villa, the, these are the things that could change for me, right? If I, When I'm looking at it. So I think Villa could be here. Villa could be anywhere from 8th to 5th. These are all interchangeable for me, including Brighton as well. But I don't see any of the below being interchangeable with that top nine. Um, Spurs could end up here. They could be awful. Kane could go. Everything could get messed up because this could... If if Kane does stay, it'll probably be his last season. So will that affect things? I don't know. Will some perform? Chelsea have still got too many players for me, but they've got so much talent. It's just... Imp I can't predict them being down here again. I just can't. Liverpool should have a better season with more energy, but is it going to take them too long to break into the top four and tip Newcastle? I don't think they'll quite make it. And I like Newcastle's signings, but these two could change. I just think that one won't. So that's my 1-20. to 20. Let me know which ones you think I've got completely wrong. Let me know which ones you think I'm completely talking out of my ass. Drop a like if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts on this 1-20. to 20, And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Make sure you're subbed. Peace.